Hi, my name is Becky and I am part of Thornhill Church in Cardiff. We moved here three months ago and now this is our sixth week for me and my family in isolation so it's been a very strange three months but we've been part of Thornhill Church now for I think it's about seven or eight months. I've got three young boys and I'm married to Math, Math Hopkins, the pastor, new pastor of Thornhill Church. And today I'm just going to share my short story with you. Some of you might have heard it before, so I won't go into too much detail. But I was brought up in a loving Christian family, which I'm so thankful for. They've loved Jesus. They've always shown me and taught me about him and about his Bible. And I know that it is thanks to them and the extent of how much Jesus loves me but to, thanks to them and their prayers and my grandparents' prayers that I'm able to tell you my story about Jesus. So I've always loved Jesus. I've always, like I say, I've known him and knew how much he loved me. And yeah, from a very early age, that was my story. And when I was just about to go into secondary school, we moved from Wolverhampton, where we were living when my parent, when my dad was working, to Swansea, which is where I would say I'm from. It's a very strange feeling, Cardiff. So we moved to Swansea, and three months later, I started secondary school. And I think that's hard for anyone, but especially then when you're moving in, you don't know anyone, you haven't really got a close circle of friends. Um, I would probably say that that's where things maybe started to change for me uh, spiritually. I was seeking attention and friendship, looking in all the wrong areas really, and as a result really compromised who I was. I still knew Jesus, I still loved Jesus, I knew he loved me, but I kind of knew or thought that that wouldn't gain me many friends. So I just became a bit of a shadow of myself. I was very quiet and would do whatever anyone told me. And um, yeah, just kind of really lived a lie for a good few years. And when I was about 16, just turning 16, I went on a camp, Christian camp to Germany. Like I say, I was still attending church, but living a very different life. And um, yeah, I attended this Christian camp and I saw for the first time teenagers who loved Jesus. There was about 3,000 people there, uh, teenagers there. And yeah, it just really... I saw teenagers loving Jesus and realized that it's not just me on my own. I don't have to be afraid. I don't have to fit in with anyone. I can just be me. And um, I just want to encourage some of you young people out there um, who maybe are struggling with a similar thing or feeling like you're not fitting in. Just know that you're not on your own. There are others out there um, the same age as you, going through the same things as you and I'd encourage you as young people to, to talk about the issues that you're facing and just don't be ashamed. I'm so thankful that Jesus has never been ashamed of me despite the many times I've been ashamed of him. And so yeah, from then on, I decided to really pin my life and put my trust in Jesus. And I can honestly tell you that I've never looked back. I've had times of doubting or questioning, um, although I've had this wonderful upbringing and had a brilliant Christian background, like I said. I've also known hurt, I've known pain, I've known loss, I've known abuse, and if anyone wants to contact me personally about any of the things that um, I've just said, then please feel free to. So don't think that, oh, she's had it easy because she's, you know, had this loving family, had this lovely, lovely background, always known Jesus. Sometimes things look, might look a different way to what they are. So. Yeah, I'm not saying I love Jesus and everything is perfect. I'm saying I love Jesus. And no matter what I've been through, he has never let me go. And I've always known he loves me. And I'm so thankful for that. Um, at the moment, a verse that really stands out to me is Luke 19 verse 40. And it's following on from when Jesus was um, on a donkey going into Jerusalem, which we know is was his way, um, his entrance to basically his death. And how these five, six weeks before his death, people are praising him and are saying, blessed is, uh, is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. And the Pharisees, the, the skeptics, the religious kind of politicians, 
they they say, Jesus, tell them to stop saying these things about you. Tell them to stop blaspheming that, you know, what they're saying isn't true. And I love Jesus' reply. He says, I tell you, if these people keep silent, the stones will cry out in praise. And all those years I kept silent. I didn't tell the people that I kind of thought were my friends. I didn't tell anyone. And I'm so thankful that even when we're not telling people, his creation um, is crying out to praise to him. And I now claim that I will not let the rocks um, cry out his praise instead of me, that I will be the one um, singing out his praise. And there's a, there's a new song I've heard, which I'll um, post following on from this, that, that has those words, I will not let the rocks cry out in my place. And so yeah, just be encouraged today. Have a great day, everyone. Enjoy the sunshine. Um, I'm off downstairs to occupy three boys, six and under for the rest of the day. So have a great day. Bye.